So last time we did a um, two cubes, now we're doing a cylinder, and as you can see it's both on the same piece of canvas. We're just, we're doing two smaller paintings on one piece of canvas, and we did the cubes at the t on the top part of the canvas, and now we're doing the cylinder on the bottom part. And I filled in the base layer colors, the extreme shadow, moderate shadow, moderate light, and extreme light. And now I'm making a gradient, so we're bringing gradients back again, yay! <laughs> So as I said, you can um, Evolve helps us to build on our skills piece by piece, um, starting with the most foundational skills and then working our way up. And the way that they structure everything is so so well thought out. Anyways, the last time I did gradients was for assignment three. And there I was doing straight gradients. So it was just rectangles and we were doing a gradient up and down perpendicular. And now we're doing a curved gradient, which is gonna be a little bit of a challenge, slightly more of a challenge anyways, which like I said, I really highly admire the way that they design this program because they add complexity in such a, how do you say, like a very well thought out, intelligent way so that it doesn't overwhelm the students and every new step makes sense. Like, so we start out learning how to do edges and then we learn how to do gradients, and then they take away the gradients and teach us how to assign values, look at shadows and lights, and then they bring the gradients back in and make it slightly more difficult by presenting the gradient on a curve rather than making it a straight gradient. And that's really all this painting is. It's just, can you do the edges? Can you make a nice round ball without um, going all over the place? Can you place the values in the correct places? Do you know that this is a very dark shadow and this is a moderate shadow? Do you know that this is a moderate light or this is an extreme light? And then can you do the gradients, but now with a slightly at a slightly higher level of difficulty? And as you can see, see I'm still <laughs> struggling with gradients a bit. I don't know, a lot of people, when I first joined the program and I was kind of looking at some of the comments in the Facebook group, a lot of people were complaining, not complaining, but they did mention that gradients are really hard. And I was like, hmm, interesting. And then I got into gradients myself and I, I found out what they meant. Um, I'm still, one thing I was still doing at this point was that I would wipe my brush down in between doing the gradients, but then I wouldn't put paint on it again. And what happened is when I went over the, um, the edge of the buffer, I ended up taking paint off instead of adding the right paint colors on, if you know what I mean. So my sphere has a weird glow in the middle that it shouldn't have, but anyways, now I know. Um, and then we fill in the background with the same admixture between extreme shadow and moderate shadow. We use the exact same background for all of the paintings. So I start out by um, painting around the sphere to make sure that I don't mess up that nice curved line that I made before. And then from there, that makes the rest of the filling in the background much easier. Filling in the background, actually, it doesn't take a whole lot of thought. It just takes time and you have to be careful. Oh, and then one other thing that they added is now we're doing gradients to, um, to smooth out the horizon line so that it doesn't look so flat. And so between this admixture of extreme and moderate shadow, and the table, which is a moderate light, we put in a buffer that is, let's see, I think I used the moderate shadow and then blended the edges. So sometimes it's a little bit tricky when mathematically it doesn't work out exactly that you have like one admixture in between the buffer and the other color. But, well, real life isn't always like mathematical, right? So so this is our um, typical gradient at a, a straight line gradient. So same technique there. I should have made that buffer a little thicker now that I look at it. Actually, a lot thicker because the thicker the buffer is, the easier it is to get that, get enough space to do the blending. Oops, kind of nicked that sphere a little. The nice thing about oil paints is that they take a few days to dry, which means that you can kind of go over things over and over again which you can't really do with acrylics and definitely not with watercolors, but I think oil is my favorite medium now. <laughs> I don't know if I'm biased because of this program, of course, but I really like oils. I love the smell of oils even. Like just when I'm finished with the painting, my hands smell like oil paints and my, my 
my desk, like the air around my desk smells like oil paint. It's a very nice smell. So that's the sphere. And then um, just kind of cleaning it up a little. And here's a little slideshow of the phases that the sphere went through to get to where it is. Isn't it interesting how it starts out as, a, as this kind of like very two-dimensional flat image, but once you put in those gradients for the sphere and in the background, it really looks three-dimensional. And then here are some shots of me using up my leftover paint to do the whatever. Um, and that's it. So if you want to get some more background information, thoughts, whatever, you can check out the blog at the link you see on your screen, and I will see you next time.